Welcome to the Pacific Northwest. This is Midwife Mountain and I'm Patty. I am a homestead homie because I love to watch Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. What's up, homestead homies? Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And today, we're, is today Friday? It is. Why do we know it's Friday? Because we're going to do our little health video. Health videos on Friday. everyone needs to watch today. Make sure you pay close attention. We'll wait two seconds for you to get your pen and paper. Also, uh, thanks for sending in the intros. We really do appreciate it. You guys, it really, I think it really brings community to the channel. So if you'd like to send one in, please do. And you're just going to say your name, where you're from in the world, that you're a homestead homie and you're watching Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Yeah. All right. So what is on the health plate for today? I want to talk about your, where your health really comes from. I know. I know. <laughs> where? From your gut. It does. It really does. Um, I truly believe it, you know, 80% of your immune system is, is from your gut. So if you have an unhealthy gut, then everything I, else is going to go haywire. You have an unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> that could be too. But, you, you know, it could cause like, you know, if you have skin problems, if you're having like eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, um, if you're having possibly autoimmune diseases, um, some of these issues can be fixed just by healing your gut. Disclaimer, we're not doctors, nor do we pretend to be one. Make sure you do your homework. Don't believe anything that we say, but we know what we're talking about. <laughs> okay. So, you know, just basically by adding these type of foods that I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to tell you the, you know, the benefits of them and um, kind of some little extra things about incorporating fermented type foods into your diet daily. And it doesn't just have to be like actual food food. I'm going to talk about drinks too. Because, you know, just like anything else, everybody's different. Some people may not like, you know, fermented peppers. Or beet kvass. We have a video about that right yeah, here. Yeah, beet kvass actually came, I mean, these, these foods have been around for thousands and thousands of years. They used them, you know, to help preserve their food. They help, had them for health. They had them for healing. They've used them with great results right. for, for thousands and thousands of years, all over from the Middle East using, you know, yogurts and soured milk. You know, to um, the Asian, you know, South Asia, like India and um, Pakistan and those places, you know, they're using a lot of the, the milk and dairy ferments, keepers, um, even in like Japan and China, that's where kombucha came from. So yeah. they've been using these for such a very, very long time. So what she's saying basically that is if you, maybe you don't like kombucha, but maybe you could have another fermented drink like a beet kvass or something else. So you just have to find what works for you right, and then everyone's different. get on it. Right, Right, for sure. Yeah, I love it. So, you know, um, just trying different things, you know, some things you like, some things you don't. You know, I know, like, I'll do beet kvass when we have a lot of beets. I right. don't do it all the time. Um, I do do kombucha. It's continual. Do I have it. Do do. <laughs> I didn't say doo doo. It's continual. I so I kombucha is going all the time. Yogurt is homemade, you know, from our raw milk. That's going all the time. And then I'll inundate and do other things yeah. because just like everything else, you and just like your diet, you guys. I know there's so many people out there that eat the same thing every day. Every day you have the same thing for breakfast. You have the same thing for lunch, and maybe you'll vary dinner a little bit. Oof. But if you keep eating the same thing every day and every day. Your body is not going to get all the vitamins and minerals it needs, so you may end up ending up having some, you know, vitamin and mineral deficiency. There's people that actually get sick from eating the same food right. every single day. Right, because you need a variety of everything. Same thing with fermented foods or what we call, you know, probiotic rich foods. You don't want to do the same thing all the time because you want to introduce to your your system a variety of this bacteria. You don't want the same all the time. You want to mix it up. That's why if you're going out and spending a lot of money on expensive probiotics, you know, if you want to save some money, you can start, you know, fermenting your own vegetables or making some of these fermented drinks. You're going to get a variety. If you're doing the same probiotic all the time and all the time that you're getting from the store, same you're getting the same bacteria. So you want to mix it up. So if you do go ahead and get probiotics in the grocery store or the health food stores, make sure that you'll do one for maybe a few months. 
and then change it up and get a different kind because you want to introduce different strains of bacteria to your body because you want to be as strong as you, and, you know, your immune system and you want to introduce all these to your body. I mean, we're trying to tell you guys, you have to eat live food. That's why you guys watch our shows. Um, you know, we want to teach you guys about fermenting eat and that's live eating food. live food so yeah. you can get the great probiotics, the bacterias, the microbes, you know, you know, you guys watch these uh, holistic or, or natural gardening channels and you want to, you buy into that for your garden, yeah, like you want soil. that soils good and microbes and all. It's the same with your body. Imagine that there's actually a connection there. So we just keep trying to bring you guys this information and, um, you know, we do get contacted by people that are trying things and that they can notice the difference in their uh, energy levels, in their health, in their happiness, uh, sleeping overnight. And, um, you know, we're also going to probably talk about um, if you do start implementing some of this stuff that we talk about, that, you you know, you kind of ease into it. You know, you just don't want to start drinking or, or eating a whole bunch of fermented food at once. Because you'll get bloated. Right. You'll get bloated. You could, you could also have something they call a healing crisis because I want to talk about why we should add these to our diet. And one of them is detoxification. Because right. it's a very good way to get rid of heavy metals, which we're inundated with day in and day out. Um, from the air that we breathe, from the things we put on our skin, from the food that we eat. So it's a great heavy metal detoxifier and for toxins. So detoxification is great. It's just a great way. Right. But it's also really good for your, um, you know, up in that immune system and digestion. So I know people say that they might get really bloated or, you know, uh, they're, you know they just kind of felt, you know, they had to go to the bathroom Diarrhea. a lot. Diarrhea. Because it's... say it. <laughs> And so it's just one of those things that you can um, start slowly. You know, when we have like the fermented vegetables, try maybe a tablespoon or two. And then maybe work your way up to maybe a fourth of a cup or so if you have a bigger serving. Or maybe when you're starting the kombucha, you don't want to have a whole big bottle, just have a little bit. Because you do have detoxifying effects. They call it a healing crisis. Sometimes some people may have it, some people may not, where you might just not feel very good. Maybe you feel fatigued or maybe you've got a slight headache because it's detoxifying, getting all this gunk out of you, and it's trying to clean you out. Right. So um, take things slow, you know, introduce, you know, just have a little bit, and then if you're feeling good, then you can kind of add more to it. That's why I always like to have a variety. That's why, you know, the probiotic type ferments or cultured foods, you know, I like to do drinks and I like to do the actual foods if I'm going to ferment it, the vegetables. So we like, and then also I'll do the dairy too. Yeah, we do So we all. try to mix it all up and every day, you know, maybe we'll, we'll have a kombucha, we'll have some yogurt, we'll have, you know, some fermented vegetables. And maybe, you know, one day, maybe we'll just have one of them. Or maybe one day if something happens, we forget, we won't have it, you know, and we'll add it back in. You know, try not to be so like rigid in the things you do because life isn't, like that. You know, I don't think there's any day we ever miss a fermented food. Well, we, we have some have kind a, of food. Yeah, yeah. Have, but it's not always though. the same. You I mean, every culture in history has used fermented foods for health and for uh, vigor and for detox, you know, and, you know, lachaim for life. So, you know, this is not, it's not some weird <laughs> science stuff that's going on. This stuff has been around, this is ancient stuff we're talking about. And here's the big one it's cheap. I mean, you guys, it's expensive if you go buy probiotics. Right. This is so cheap. If you make homemade kombucha, it's $3 and something cents a bottle if you buy it at the store. It's pennies to make it at home. All you need is tea, sugar, and water. I mean, it's yeah. easy, 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 speezy. And besides that, with the vegetables, especially if you grow a garden, I mean, all you need is, you know, salt, your water, and your vegetables, and just, you know, a little time, and it's so simple. So simple. And another way you can ferment too is by using whey. We have a video whey. we did on fermenting for dummies Yeah, too. and another way you can ferment is by using whey. So the reason why Stacy and I do a lot of the salt brines and stuff is because we're trying to bring you the information that you'll easily have on hand. So like you'll be like, oh, I want to try that. And you're like, I got a bag of carrots and some salt and you got the filtered water so you can do it. But you could also use whey, which we might be showing you later on I'm gonna do it. Wait, I'm going to do a drink. So yeah. you get ready to look at a really yummy drink. I'm going to use whey because whey is just basically kind of inoculates. It gets your culture going quicker so your ferment will be done faster when, right. you use your, when you use your whey. Right. Anything else you want to talk about? No, I want Detoxify. to get to it. Detoxify. It's less expensive. It has variety. Yeah. So, you know, variety is the spice of life. Try different ferments. If you like it, do it. If you don't, don't do it and kind of mix it up. Don't just do peppers all the time. Don't just do carrots all the time. 
mix it up because they will last a while in the refrigerator when you're doing them. Cool, let's go check out what you got uh, fermenting over here. Okay, come on over. Okay, so now we're over here, we're getting ready. We're gonna be making a fermented lemonade. So get ready, cause it's really good. And I have to tell you a little secret. Fermented lemonade was really the very first fermented food I ever tried. Way before the kombucha, before the fermented vegetables. This was the first thing I ever tried. It's very, very easy to do. So all you need is five ingredients. I've gotten this um, recipe from the Nourishing Traditions cookbook by Sally Fallon that I have had for many, many years and I love it to death and it has so many wonderful ideas in it. So this is from there. So basically you need five ingredients. You're gonna need lemons and I'm gonna do about a half gallon or two quarts. If you want more then just double the recipe. Um, six or to eight lemons. These were six bigger lemons, so I did six lemons and I just squeezed the juice. You're going to need about a half a cup of whey. And you're going to need a half a cup of raw sugar or succinate. And um, I'm using the succinate today because succinate basically, it, it's um, sugar cane natural. It's a very minimally processed sugar. You can find it at most of the stores. They do have it. S U C A and AT, succinate, and it, um, it kind of keeps the, the molasses -y flavor and keeps that in there more so it's very mineral rich and it just gives it a good flavor. So when I do a lot of my drinks, if I ferment drinks, I like to use the succinate. So you're going to need a half a cup of that and you're going to need about half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, okay, because as it ferments, it really gives it a nice flavor. All right, I want to talk about how you guys can make whey. Because a lot of times you'll look at a recipe and it calls for whey and people are like, how do I get whey? What's whey? What's whey? And it's just basically the liquid that comes off of, you know, your yogurts or your clabbered milk. Now I'm using raw milk. Some people might say, well, I don't have access to raw milk. You can do this. Get a good organic plain full fat yogurt at the store um, and you can do it yourself. Now I showed you a few ways you can do it. Here's just a unbleached coffee filter and I just put some yogurt in there. And this clear liquid, which this is the elixir of health right here, they used to drink this. Instead of what they have for like coffee parlors that people go to, like Starbucks, this is what they used to go to to drink this stuff because this is full of protein and so many nutrients, it's really good for you. So, um, and this will last in the refrigerator for a few months. So once you've strained it, keep it in there and you can use it to do some of your ferments. So this is one way you can do it. And then this liquid here is your way. I also did a video called Lacto Fermenting Blueberries. We'll link that above. And um, I use whey in that video. So you can check that out. Here's another way. I just did my little strainer basket like this. And I put a, you know, cotton thin cloth in there. I put my yogurt in there. And here's my liquid here in the bottom, which is the whey. That's another way of doing it. And then you can put it in a mason jar and save it. Or if I have a lot, I'll put it in a cheesecloth, tie it in a knot, I hang it up with a spoon, let it hang, and it'll drip down, and I use it that way. So it just depends. There's lots of ways you guys can do it, and then you'll have your way. All right, so five ingredients, very easy. I'm doing a half gallon here, um, or two quarts. So all I'm going to do is start with my succinate or your raw sugar, half a cup, and that's going to ferment out, okay? And then I'm going to do my half cup of my whey. Now, some people might say, I don't do any dairy. So guess what? You can use water kefir. So just replace the whey here and you can do it with water kefir. It'll do it the same way. So water kefir is good for you guys that aren't doing any dairy. All right. So then I'm going to do my lemons, my six lemons, big lemons that I squeeze. Just like that. And then I'm going to put in my half teaspoon of nutmeg. And then I'm going to fill it up rest of the way with my water. So two quarts. And then once it gets filled up, I'm going to go ahead and shake it up. And then I'm going to put the lid on it. So this is easy. And now since I put the whey in it, it's going to speed up the fermenting process. And I'm going to leave it out two to three days. All right, just so you guys know, this is filtered water. Make sure you have filtered water. Don't use any of these ferments with a chlorinated type water because that'll mess everything up. So make sure you have good purified water. Is this not on straight? 
So I'm going to shake this up really good. And then I'm going to put it somewhere, you know, in a cupboard or a dark place, and I'm going to let it ferment two or three days. Now, the two days, if it was warmer, you know, in your home, I might go two days. Three days is going to ferment off a little bit more of the sugar. And um, you can taste it and see if you like it. So I shook this up really good. Everything's dissolved and mixed in here. Then, like I said, you're going to put it in a dark place, let it ferment for two or three days. Um, the longer you let it ferment, when you get closer to three days, it's going to be a little more sour. I know a lot of people, when they get that sour taste, they might want to put a couple drops of, you know, wheel um, stevia um, in there, or you might want to put some juice, you know, do whatever you want. I know a lot of people will also do this, and I've done this quite a few times with strawberries. Strawberries are in season right now, so besides juicing the lemons, you can um, juice your strawberries also. It'll give it a different, you know, flair to it. Try it out and see what you guys think. When you're done in your two or three days and you think it tastes good, then you're going to bottle it. Put it in your bottle, put the lid on it, put it in your refrigerator, and actually the longer you let it set, it just builds a better, better flavor, especially with the molasses from the sucanet and also from the, um, um, the nutmeg. So if you do it and put it in the refrigerator for a week or so and then start drinking it, it's great. All right, guys, so that's it for our uh, fermenting Friday. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good. And uh, hopefully you guys will give this a try. Leave a comment down below if you've had something like this before. Or um, just if you want to interact, uh, do you put those strawberries in the mix uh, while you're letting it ferment or when it's done? No, you can do it at the beginning. Or you can do it at the end. I mean, either way. But if you want the flavor in it, then you can kind of put the strawberries in it when you're fermenting it. Or if you just want it to look pretty, you can do it with blueberries at the very end when you're ready to serve it. You know what I mean? That's a, so cool about ferments. Use your imagination. Yeah. And they really come out good. I mean, if you want to go ahead and try raspberries in it, try it. Ra yeah. Raspberries wouldn't juice as well as a strawberry, but maybe raspberries at the end when you're going to drink it for the final product. So our thing is, guys, is we're just trying to bring you the information. You guys kind of tweak it and move it and make it work for you. I mean, that's, this what, is tried that's and what it's true. all about. The lemonade by itself is just Yeah, great. that's golden, but if you Especially want to add little summer. flavors and stuff. So yeah. thanks for watching. Don't forget, we're going to be at Mansfield next week. We'll be there um, Sunday, Monday um, in Missouri, and it's at the Baker Creek Spring Planting Festival, and it's down below is the link. We're also going to be at the Greater Homesteaders of America Conference, the premier homesteader conference in America um, in October 14th in Virginia. We're going to have more details about that coming out, but there is a link down below if you want to get your tickets. And I know that they're selling pretty good right now, so you might want to make your plans and get everything in order for that one. And the fermenting kit winner. Oh, yeah. Uh, the next video that you guys are seeing, um, we're going to announce who won the fermenting kit, and we'll also be doing the um, Homestead, Homestead Homie, Homie of, of the, the month. month. Yay! Man, we have so many give-outs. And I... High five. <laughs> and you what? I think I know who won Homestead yeah. Homie of the Month. I, I pretty much let her choose uh, the Homestead Homie of the Month. We're just looking for you guys that leave comments on our videos. If you have other social media platforms that you're using the, um, you know, shares and, and, you know, talking us up on the other platforms and directing people our way, that's just, we're just looking for interaction, you know, just like a homie does. Uh, it's a group of peers, right? So we're all hanging out, we're doing our thing, and we're looking for you guys to make sure you're interacting with the channel. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll see you guys Sunday. See ya. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a Homestead Homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.